God, this problem seems super complicated and I'm stuck. Ah, so I'll just use a hash map for this. Coding interviews are challenging and there are some very common mistakes that people tend to make. Today, I'll be going over those common mistakes and I'll be teaching you how to avoid them. But before we go over them, I've noticed that a lot of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. Please subscribe because it will guarantee you a job at whatever company you want. The first mistake that we're going to over might seem very obvious to you guys, but it is a mistake that a lot of people tend to make, which is being egoistic and full of yourself during an interview. All right, Jeffrey, I know that you're an amazing coder, but that does not mean that you ignore the hints or the discussion that the interview is throwing at you just because you're full of yourself because you know how to code. So this is something which I've done personally. And what happened to me was that the interviewer tried to suggest me something and I immediately knocked them off by saying that no, my solution is better and I don't even want to consider your solution. Now, I didn't say this exactly, but I kind of implied it. And now this is a big red flag for the interviewer because they are looking for someone who is compassionate, who's going to be a key team player and is going to be interacting with the team and sharing opinions and discussing of how to get to a solution. Now, if you go against this, they're obviously going to reject you. The thing is that listening to the interviewer is also key because the interviewer is trying to guide you into the right direction. In most cases, what will happen is that they're trying to hint you to a better solution or to a better approach even if they're not and you think that they're going in a wrong direction just don't be upfront to them rather try to discuss it in a reasonable manner and tell them why your approach is better than theirs the second problem which is also very common is solving the problem within your head and not letting the interviewer know of how you're approaching the solution the first thing that the interviewer can infer from this is that maybe you had seen the solution and you're not really thinking about it and you just got to it directly and just started coding it out the other thing that they might think is that you're not good at communicating which is a big red flag because they're always looking for engineers who are good at communicating so make sure that you're not solving it within your head rather you're speaking out loudly and I would rather encourage that you over communicate instead of under communicate within an interview now the third mistake that people tend to make and this might sound controversial is that they choose a programming language which takes 20 lines just to get an input from the user now imagine you're sitting in an interview which is about 45 minutes and you take about 35 minutes to come up and discuss the solution and you're left with 10 minutes to solve the problem. Now imagine you're taking five minutes just to set up the user input. That would be a lot of waste of time. If the syntax is something which is getting in between you and your solution, then ditch that language. That is why it is statistically proven that languages like Python and JavaScript are better off during interviews because they're easier to write. You can express a lot of code and logic easily. And I know that this is not an easy decision to make because most people are comfortable at the language that they interview in and they don't want to change it. But let me tell you this, if you're able to change it, if you're able to switch to Python or JavaScript, then you will find it much easier to write code during the interview. The fourth mistake that people tend to make is that when they hear a question, they don't think deeply about it. Rather, what they do is that they have a solution in their mind that is the first solution that is coming to them and they start coding it out directly just to impress the interviewer. Rather, the interviewer is not impressed by this. What you want to do is, is that you want to discuss the worst possible solution first. So it can be like a brute force solution so that the interviewer knows that you're thinking about the problem in a manner going from worst to best and they will also see how you evolve from that worst possible solution to the best possible solution and that thinking process is key for the interviewer because they're looking for that in the engineers the fifth mistake that people tend to make is that sometimes we just don't understand a concept but we just go along with it we play along with it with the interviewer and when we dive deeper and deeper into it there is some point where the interviewer just loops back and ask us why we made this decision and when we have to explain of why we're making that decision and we don't know the terminology behind why we're doing it we just get confused and we don't know how to justify it now this can be bad in a sense that you're trying to be pretentious and you're being dishonest rather the interviewer knows that you're human if you're forgetting a terminology or if you're just confused feel free to ask them because that will show that you're willing to communicate you're willing to collaborate in that setting and don't feel pressured about it in that way just don't be dishonest because that is a much bigger red flag than just admitting that you don't know something. The sixth mistake that people tend to make is that when they don't know how to solve the problem and they're stuck, they just go blank. They're not communicating. And this goes back to my emphasis of over communicating. And now if you don't communicate and you're just silent and sitting there awkward, this won't leave a good impression on your interviewer because they don't know what's going inside of your head. Rather, what I personally did was that if I got stuck, I would just start naming out all the data structures. I would just say, oh, so can a hash map print into this problem? Hash map. 
I'll use the hash map. Can a link list fit into this problem? And by doing this, I was not staying silent. I was discussing the various data structures. I was showing off my knowledge, but also the interviewer can hint you. they will be like, oh, maybe do you want to use a link list? And then you know that it is narrowed down to a link list. Even if that doesn't happen, right? Sometimes you're just discussing the data structure and it comes up to you that, oh, this is the data structure that can be used to solve the problem. The seventh mistake, and I did this a lot personally, is that when I used to write out my code, I would just give the interviewer a stare, expecting them to say, oh, Jeffrey, you did really well now you're an adonis but no that's not the right approach because what you want to do is is that once you have written out your code start preparing test cases to test your code and debug it in front of your interviewer you don't have to wait for them to say that something is wrong try to find what's wrong yourself try to prove that this is a working piece of code and that will allow the interviewer to see that you're taking initiative to test your code but it will also allow you to catch some edge cases which will really polish up your interview performance at the end the eighth mistake is not modularizing your code and this is very common because when you're in an interview setting you're trying to rush the problem you're trying to get the code there as soon as possible so you forget to modularize your code but this is not a good practice because when you start modularizing your code it will be easier for you to understand it will be easier for the interviewer to understand but also they will see that you have some really good practices that they can take away that the company can benefit from so they will give you some favor while writing your interview review the ninth mistake really adds up onto your coding practice and it is not naming your variable names descriptively. Now, this is very important because when interviews see you write bad variable names, they just know that you don't have good coding practices. Whereas even if your variable name is very, very long, it doesn't matter as long as when someone is reading it, they can understand what's the purpose of that variable, then you're good to go. The length doesn't really matter. A lot of people that I've seen, they tend to go like, oh, my variable name is too long. But to be very honest, if that long variable name allows the reader to understand what that variable does, then that is a win win and make sure to do this because the interviewer will take it positively and will note it down in the review. The 10th mistake and the final one on the list is that you shouldn't doubt yourself and doubting yourself is a big thing. It is very common amongst everyone. Let me tell you this, that I used to do this a lot. I thought that I needed more coding interview practice, more practice, more questions, everything that is related to that, right? But to be honest, let me tell you this, that every failed interview is just you getting closer to that successful interview. And why that is because as you gain practice you're learning don't avoid the interviews i've seen people who tend to avoid interviews because they just feel that they're not ready well let me tell you this that when you interview when you put yourself in that difficult situation you are getting yourself ready for that clutch moment so i hope that you found these tips to be insightful please let me know in the comment section down below if you have any tips of your own that you found to be useful please like this video and subscribe to my channel and as always see you guys in the next video